Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Reduce your ping time, get faster speeds when you game at expressvpn.com slash inside. Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. So guys, this week, Nintendo rolled out the expansion to its new Switch Online service. If you haven't heard, it adds nine Nintendo 64 games, 14 Sega Genesis games, and the upcoming Happy Home Paradise DLC for Animal Crossing New Horizons, or an extra fee, of course. And it has not not gone well, to say the least. Now, Nintendo has never done internet things well, but this is a new, woo, this is a new low even for them. All right, so let's talk about it. So even before the expansion pass launch, players were complaining about the pricing. Now, normally the Switch Online service is 20 bucks a year, eh, minus a penny, for an individual and 35 for a family. But if you want the expansion pack, that rises to an annual pass of $49.99. See, I subtracted the penny this time for one person and $79.99 for families. Now, that was already an issue. Players voiced their displeasure with the price bump all over the internet. Okay, but now it launched. It launched this week. How is it going? It's going bad, very bad to say the least. That's the headline of this story. Sometimes gamers can get worked up over minor stuff, but in this case, they absolutely have a point and deserve to be outraged. Now, specifically the Nintendo 64 games, which came out when Bill Clinton was president. I voted in the 1996 elections. That's how old I am. Those games are struggling to run on the Switch's hardware, which is not good. Let's take a look at Ocarina of Time, one of the best video games ever made, a landmark title that inspired a whole generation of open world RPGs. People are excited to play it again. It runs like absolute hey. on the Switch. Check out this clip from Mutant Aura where the game turns into a slideshow before crashing. Another video from Topool shows input lag that makes Google Stadia look quick and responsive. Boom, burn. Google Stadia, you thought we had forgotten about you? No, we're still gonna take some shots at you. It also doesn't look that great compared to previous versions of Ocarina of Time. Speedrunner ZFG1 showed some screenshots comparing different versions of the game, the original, the Wii version, virtual console version and the Switch Online version, and the Wii version looked better, with fog, draw distances, and water textures all being worse on the Switch. But don't worry, other games have issues too. So many issues. Dan Koopman showed off Super Mario 64, which performed so badly that Mario's voice in the intro sound chopped, slowed down, and pretty much terrifying. Yeah, it's perfect for Halloween, except when you want to actually play the game. Mario Kart 64 had the same issues too, as AK Family Home showed off in a clip. <laughs> Creepy voices, not intentionally, caused by terrible slowdown. So we're paying more money for worse versions of some classic games, but there's other issues too. As Kotaku pointed out, the original Mario Kart 64 needed a controller pack to save time trial data if you wanted to race against your ghost. Oh my God, I remember those controller packs. That was so long ago. I remember swapping them with my friends in college. Just kidding, nobody else played Mario Kart 64, but I wanted a friend to switch it with. Ah, good times. But the problem is the Switch version of Mario Kart 64 thinks it needs a controller pack too in 2021, even though obviously controller packs aren't available. There's not a spot for it on the Switch. There's a whole bunch of issues. So right now you can't race against your ghost in the time trials. There's also button layout issues considering that the Nintendo 64 controller was very different from the Switch controller and all other controllers really when you think about it. It had six buttons on the right side of the Nintendo 64 controller compared to four on the Switch, leading to some awkward combinations. That means that in the rail shooter sin and punishment, it's actually impossible to shoot and move right at the same time. So yeah, that's a problem. That I guess that's your punishment. I don't know what your sin is, but that's definitely a punishment. Oh, and as Eurogamer noticed, if you're playing Super Mario 64, you can't make use of the Joy-Con rumble feature unless you play the Japanese version, of course. So yes, a lot of little ticky-tack things wrong. Actually, no, if a game looks like a slideshow, that's not ticky-tack, that's a major penalty. That's a 15-yarder. Meanwhile, the leaker Mondo Mega did some data mining and said they've discovered at least 38 Nintendo 64 games and 52 Genesis and Mega Drive games that are planned. The Nintendo 64 games include Majora's Mask, 
Super Smash Brothers, Wave Race. But the larger question, will they be in a playable state? Because if you can't play them, everything else kind of falls by the wayside. It all leads to the unavoidable impression that Nintendo kind of slapped this together and then stuck a big price tag on it. Now, if they've just added this to the existing Switch Online service with no extra charge, yeah, people would still have griped about the performance issues and they would have been right to do it, but at least it would have been something you're getting at no additional cost. But this is a significant additional cost for worse games. To charge that much money for games that in some cases are basically unplayable, not a great look. Nintendo's got some work to do, ASAP. All right, we're gonna get to the rest of the stories in just a second. But first, guys, let's talk about Purple. We're all obsessed with sleep right now. Of course, there's a million gimmicks out there promising to help you sleep better, but nothing can make you sleep better if you're sleeping on a terrible mattress. That's where it all starts. That's why I recommend Purple Mattress. Only Purple has the Gel Flex Grid. That's a stretchy, squishy material that flexes around pressure points. It never attains heat. The Gel Flex Grid supports your back and legs while magically cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. I love their pillows. They just just keep my neck right in place. I don't sleep with it like this and wake up like, oh, why is my neck in excruciating pain? Because I slept like this. Not with purple. Keeps your neck right in place. You get a good night's sleep. Getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash roundup10 and use code roundup10. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash roundup10, code roundup10. For 10% off any order of $200 or more, purple.com slash roundup10, promo code roundup10, terms apply. All right, on to the rest of the stories. Amid a swirl of controversy around Activision Blizzard, you know what's going on there. Blizzard says it is canceling the upcoming BlizzCon Online, which is going to take place in February. In a notice this week, they called it a tough decision, but the right one. In announcing the cancellation, they didn't mention the sexual harassment scandal in multiple investigations into Activision Blizzard. Instead, they said they want to direct their energy toward developing games. They wrote, at this time, we feel the energy it would take to put on a show like this is best directed towards supporting our teams and progressing development of our games and experiences. They added that they want to reimagine what a future BlizzCon will look like, saying, whatever the event looks like in the future, we also need to ensure that it feels as safe, welcoming, and inclusive as possible. We're excited about what we'll do with the event when we revisit it in the future. They also said that they'll still be making announcements and updates, saying we have a lot of exciting upcoming news and releases to share with you. Meanwhile, their parent company, Activision Blizzard, recently tried to push pause on the sexual harassment lawsuit that was filed by the California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing. That was the thing that kind of sparked this whole controversy to begin with. Activision Blizzard pointed to a separate suit, a federal one, filed by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which California objected to, saying that it would cause irreparable harm to its on ongoing legal proceedings. So this gets a little complicated, but basically Activision Blizzard requested a pause in the proceedings in light of the fight between the EEOC and the state of California, but an LA County judge recently rejected their request. So the California suit goes on. If you've ever wanted to be a crow that collects souls and who doesn't really, your chance is coming soon if you're on the PlayStation or the Switch. The critically acclaimed Death's Door is coming to the PS5 and the PS4 on November 23rd. Sony announced it during its State of Play event this week. That's good news for PlayStation owners because previously the indie game from Devolver Digital was just available on PC and Xbox. Oh, and it is coming to the Switch 2 also on November 23rd. The game got good reviews when it came out this summer. IGN gave Death Store a 9 out of 10, calling it a must for those looking to scratch the itch of a classic Zelda dungeon delving game with the added bonus of impeccable combat against waves of foes in a creepy world. So guys, there are few certainties in life. There's death, there's taxes, and Steam sales getting leaked. The dates get leaked all the time, and apparently Valve is just giving up now and said, fine, we'll just post them all. Over on Steamworks, Valve published the dates of their big upcoming sales. The Steam Halloween sale is gonna be from October 28th through November 1st. The Autumn sale is gonna be held November 24th through the 30th. And the Big Steam Winter sale is gonna go on through December 22nd through January 5th of next year. Those are the big ones. Of course, they're gonna be some smaller ones too, but now you can mark your calendars and get those wallets ready. So here's a novel way of encouraging you to keep playing a game. Just troll people if they leave. People have noticed Far Cry 6 
which actually taunts you via email if you give up before you're done beating the game. Gamesindustry.biz managing editor Brendan Sinclair posted screenshots of emails that the game sends you. One says, it was amusing watching you fail. And another says, surely you can do better than this. While sarcastically, thank you for giving up. It's basically like, don't worry, Yara is in good hands with me. Sinclair added, a lot of games are already ruthlessly designed to maximize engagement, but now they email and hassle you if you dare to stop playing them. Now, Ubisoft has done this before. They sent Watch Dogs Legion players emails to encourage them to keep going. So yeah, that's one way of encouraging people to keep going. Another way is, and this will sound crazy, make a more engaging game and you won't have to harass people to keep going. I heard Far Cry 6 is good though, I haven't played it yet. All right, time for a five second review. Oh, please bring back some of the 70s soundtrack from the movies. That was the best. I would sing some right now. Don't want to get sued. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Giants Uprising is a medieval fantasy action adventure game full of giants and unlimited destruction. Take on the role of a powerful giant who finally breaks free from enslavement to seek revenge on the ruthless human race. Comes to PC November 2nd. World War Z, the heart-pounding zombie shooter that has captivated over 15 million players is here on the Switch, finally. Inspired by the Paramount Pictures film, World War Z focuses on fast-paced third-person shooter gameplay featuring swarms of hundreds of zombies. It comes to the Switch November 2nd. Bloodshore is an interactive action movie about a televised battle royale between high profile streamers, entertainers, and death row inmates. I'm cheering for the death row inmates. You control the fate of Nick, a washed up actor who fights for a life changing cash prize. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch November 3rd. Time Loader is a story driven puzzle platformer with tiny robots, alternate realities, nostalgic music, and primitive tech from the 90s. Hey, I'm, I'm from the 90s too, and I'm also primitive tech. It comes to the PC November 3rd. Just Dance 2022, the ultimate dance game, is back with new universes and 40 hot new tracks from chart-topping hits to greatest classics. Be amazed at how few of the artists you actually know and subsequently then have an existential crisis because you realize you're getting old and your best days are behind you. Just me? Well, maybe. It comes to the PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Stadia November 4th. To the Rescue is a charming dog shelter simulator. Take care of unique dogs and find the right homes for as many of them as you can. Upgrade your shelter, control disease outbreaks, learn each other's dog preferences, and make tough decisions, all while helping support real world animal shelters. It comes to PC November 4th. Two Animal Crossing New Horizons things are coming out next week. First up is the Update 2.0. It includes a number of locations like the Roost, activities like cooking, and stretching with villagers, new island customization through island ordinances, and plenty more, and the Happy Home Paradise DLC. Clients with different dream vacation requests will visit a new resort area located in an archipelago made up of several different islands where the Paradise planning team is located. You can talk to a client and find out the details of their request for a vacation home, and then make their dreams happen. Both come to the Switch November 5th. And finally, we got a big one, Call of Duty Vanguard. For years, the world has endured the largest and deadliest war ever seen, but the tides of World War II are finally turning. Now a select few must rise to finish the job and change the landscape of the war for good. In Call of Duty Vanguard, players will experience global combat through the eyes of heroes of World War II and the fateful events that brought them together. Developed by Sledgehammer Games, Vanguard is a deeply engaging narrative featuring a select group of soldiers from different countries and backgrounds who rise together to meet the world's gravest threats, change the fortunes of the war, and set the table for what we know today as Special Forces Combat. It comes to PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, and Xbox One, November 5th. That's all the news I got for you this week, guys. I hope you're having a great Halloween. We will see you soon.